When I was 17 years old, I had a massive, massive loss in my life. I lost my mom and it was incredibly difficult. But I'm not going to make this story about her in that time because it's something that I hold very near and dear to my heart. But losing her kind of set the motion for everything else that was going to happen after. And it truly, truly changed my life. So when I lost her, I felt like everything around me was just spinning. Everything was changing. I felt like I had no control of anything around me. And instead of getting into, you know, drinking or, you know, doing drugs, the way that I handled this crazy change was by not eating. And I went from 105 pounds to 82 pounds in the course of six months. It was absolutely insane. It was incredibly unhealthy, but that was the way that I controlled my life. I didn't become anorexic because I was insecure with my body or because I looked at myself and I saw something completely different. I did it because it was the one thing that nobody could change. It was the one thing that nobody could tell me to do differently or they could try, but I was the one controlling it. I remember realizing how serious it was when I went to the doctor one day and she had told me that if this continued, that I had the ability to lose my period. And on top of that, I would lose the ability to have children. And that's when I was like, okay, something needs to change. So as much as I wanted to strive for a change during that time, I had decided to move to San Diego. I was a licensed cosmetologist, I still am, and I was able to get what I thought would be my dream job. It was a very well-renowned salon in California, and they had hired me on. And I had no idea at the time that this dream salon was actually going to feed my eating disorder even more. So I was working 40 hours a week, not getting paid overtime, was told that I had to wear heels because I was too short to work there. But I think what was really just the cherry on top was that I was not allowed a break. Not a 30 minute break, not a 10 minute break, nothing. And you can imagine that when you're working 10 to 11 hours a day, your feet are blistered and your hands are burnt from you know, the curling iron and the blow dryer and you accidentally cut yourself, that would really make things worse. And that was the time during the day where I was really gonna eat. So whatever calories I was at least able to consume when I was living up north, I was now getting no more than 600 calories in a day. Absolutely awful. I decided to go back home. And this is actually the first time when I came back home that I had actually started to eat again. I was eating actually a very substantial amount. And I remember going on Instagram and one of my old friends from beauty school had gotten into something called bikini competitions. So I messaged her and I was like, hey, like, how did you get this six pack? Like, you look so good, I wanna get into this. And she connected me with her coach at the time who followed clean eating, which was very restrictive, I would say. But, you know, we had six meals a day. We had tilapia and asparagus. But I enjoyed it during that time. That was a lot of fun for me. And I felt like, again, I had gained some control in my life. That was something I seemed to always be seeking. I started going to the gym. You know, my life became making my six meals a day and going to work and then coming back, changing into gym clothes, training. But I didn't realize until a few months later that I had a completely different calling. So due to this overwhelming feeling, I kind of funneled back into anxiety and depression. And I've now come to realize that that is just a normal part of my life. I've come to accept it, but it was very, very high in this moment. So the way that I decided to cope with it was by getting into a new hobby. I started going on YouTube and finding fitness YouTubers. And I remember coming across my good friend now, Nikki, and she would upload her workouts and she would talk about things that would help inspire people to keep training and to just stay motivated. So I was like, I could do this. I could definitely do something like this. So I got my old little rinky dinky camera that my mom had bought me years ago and I started to film. Like once, twice a week, I would film my workouts and I would talk to the camera and I would take them through what I thought would be a journey to becoming a bikini competitor. As time went on, my passions did change. It got more into powerlifting or just plain bodybuilding, not really the need for competing. But the whole idea is that my energy was now being invested into something that I really, really loved doing. And I was reaching people, I was connecting with people. And because there weren't a lot of girls doing this at the time, I was able to grow my channel really quickly. 
that's when I got into YouTube full time. It was actually in November that Clayton from EHP Labs, the head of sponsors, sent me an email and he said, hello Jasmine, we would be interested in collaborating with you. You know, we think that you're a perfect match for our brand. You seem to have the same morals as we do and I really think you're gonna enjoy the products. So you've got this brand, but then you take a step back and you look at the creator. You look at Iz, you look at Clayton, you look at everybody that is making this brand what it is and you realize that it's much more than supplements. It's much more than helping you attain your fitness goals and helping you get that pump in the gym. It's actually a community. It's a family and we have all created a stellar connection and friendship with each other. You're able to see that it's, it's so much more than your average brand you know they really work hard to make everyone feel like they're a part of something that goes for the people that work for the company that goes for the athletes and that comes for all of the people that use the products it is definitely something that you can't find with a lot of other companies being a part of the EHP Labs family is something that I am so proud of something I always remind myself when things start to get a little rocky and bumpy is to let your struggles take you on an adventure because most likely if you remain optimistic it's going to take you somewhere really awesome when every door closes another door opens that is what my life has been and that's something i always always try to keep in mind because there is always a light at the end of the tunnel and there is always something better out there waiting to change your life and bring on good but let your struggles take you on an adventure because I guarantee if you remain optimistic 80% of the time, something really amazing is going to come at the end.